to another comic book review from myself, Dennis Doucette. I will be reviewing comic books that I purchased on March 14th, 2012. So today is St. Patrick's Day and I just wanted to say, hey, happy St. Patrick's Day. Green, hello, it's St. Patrick's Day, you wear green, it's just what you do. We're going to start up first with some DC Comics and up first is issue 7 of Resurrection Man. Yeah. This cover art is actually done by the artist who does American Vampire. So pretty much what's happening in this issue is Mitch Shelley, aka Resurrection Man, is on the run after breaking out of Arkham Asylum. He is staying in a hotel in Metropolis. So in this issue, Resurrection Man uh, notices that cops show up at the hotel and at first thinks that the cops are for here for him. But the cops are not actually there for him. There turns out to be some evildoers also staying at this hotel, uh, including Mr. Untouchable. Uh, the cops go in and they're pretty much helpless against Mr. Untouchable because he can't be touched. So Resurrection Man ends up being in a big fight with Mr. Untouchable. And when Mitch Shelley turns his back on him, he gets a shotgun in the back. But of course, Resurrection Man resurrects and with the new power. Uh, which is pretty awesome. So obviously, Resurrection Man defeats Mr. Untouchable, and he goes to prison. And this whole time, Mitch Shelley is trying to find out who he used to be, because he actually has no memory of who he used to be prior to when he woke up starting this new series. Really cool fight scenes in here. We get to see Resurrection Man resurrect again and get a new power, and those are always done really well. Artwork is awesome. Story is, story is told really well. I definitely give this a buy. I love reading this series every month. Resurrection Man, get it. Up next from DC Comics, we have issue 7 of Frankenstein, Agent of Shade, written by Jeff Lemire, who I love. Jeff Lemire is awesome. In this issue, pretty much, what's going on is Shade headquarters is under lockdown. There's the, uh, these monsters that Nina, the Lagoon Woman, uh, ended up creating a while ago, trying to create the first creature commandos, but they all went wrong. They were all evil and such, so she had to lock them all away in a prison. Somehow, these creatures escape, and also at the same time, all the humanoids, the drones that work for Shade, end up getting, kind of getting a conscience, and start fighting uh, Frankenstein and all the creature commandos, including Father Time and Ray Palmer. There's really awesome fight sequences in here. The, the artwork is amazing in this book. There's a really cool part where Father Time and Ray Palmer are kind of circled by a bunch of humanoids, and Ray Palmer says, I got this, and he shrinks down and just destroys all of them and it's so awesome and you know it's really it's just really cool he has a really cool badass moment by the end of this issue all the monsters and the humanoids are pretty much destroyed but Frankenstein and his team find out that there was another inmate inside the prison that escaped and uh, you'll find you have to read this to find out who it was it's a pretty big deal if you read this comic definitely a buy oh my gosh it's so good all right up next we have Green Lantern Issue 7. Oh, so good. This is The series has just been getting better and better, and we're finally going to find out who the Indigo Tribe is. So beginning of this issue, Sinestro uh, comes after Hal Jordan, and he says he needs his help. Hal Jordan pretty much refuses, saying, I don't want to be a Green Lantern anymore, or a puppet to you. And Sinestro answers this by taking Carol Ferris uh, hostage and threatening Hal Jordan that if he doesn't follow his orders, he's going to kill Ferris. To this, Hal Jordan replies with a big powerful punch into Sinestro's face. And they start fighting, and pretty much Hal Jordan has no power over Sinestro because he controls his ring, because it's a ring made from his ring. Hal Jordan is easily beat by Sinestro. The Indigo Tribe pops out of nowhere and they take Sinestro prisoner. Hal Jordan comes along for the ride and gets thrown away into a prison for some reason. And he has a conversation with one of the Indigo Tribe members, which is really cool. So in this issue, we get to find out a lot about who the Indigo Tribe is and what makes them work. It's just a really good issue. It read pretty quick, but that's pretty much how Jeff Johns' books uh, tend to read sometimes. Definitely pick this up. Great writing, great artwork. Love it. It's a buy. What? Alright, up next we have issue 7 of Batman and Robin. Oh, so good because this is just as good as Batman from Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. This is written by Peter Tomasi with the artwork by Patrick Gleason and it's just so good. Oh, it's so good. So in this issue, Robin is being tortured by nobody and Batman is on his way and he wants to save his son's life because he's in danger. All of a sudden Batman crashes the party. Not really a party, because Damien is being beat to death. And Batman's all like, you try to murder my son and expect to live? And that was just badass. 
that was just a really cool line from Batman. It shows that Damien means a lot to him, so much that he's probably willing to kill for him. So pretty much this issue is one giant fight between Batman and nobody. There's knives, there's fists, and there's acid. Of course, Batman rises victorious over nobody. Robin seems to have learned a positive lesson from his father, Bruce. But then, something else happens. You're gonna have to read the issue to find out. I'm definitely not giving that away. Why? Who do you think I am? I'm not a spoiler. Go read this book. It's super good. Damien's awesome. Batman's awesome. Uh, end of the first story arc. So good. Read it. Just read it. Give it a buy. All right, for some reason, my comic book shop did not get in Peter Ponderfost issue two from Image Comics. I was really bummed, trust me. This was one of the books I was looking most forward to this whole entire month. I loved issue one, uh, so I was really bummed when I found out they didn't get it in. So what I ended up doing was I purchased issue two on my iPhone through Comicology. There were two other books I actually ordered, DB, The Amazing Adventures of DB Cooker, and The Exile of Planet of the Apes. They're both number one issues I was looking forward to getting. My comic book shop did not order them because they didn't think it would, anyone wanted them for some reason. So I had them order me an issue each of that. So I'll have that probably next week and I'll put that along with my review for that week. I'm still gonna be purchasing Peter Panjavash issue two when I, when I get that. Uh, but for now, I bought it online and I read it so I can review it for you guys. So here we go. Issue number two of Peter Bondrafast on this little phone. I actually read it on my computer, but this is how I downloaded it and bought it. Peter Bondrafast issue two takes place right after issue one leaves off, and it's just amazing. So Peter and his lost boys end up taking some of the Germans hostage. After taking the German soldiers hostage, Peter and his lost boys find out that a bunch of British soldiers were captured. This book is just so well drawn. The writing is just so fluent and it's just so amazing. I don't see myself turning ahead pages to look ahead at all. I'm just in the story and I'm, I'm just in it. I'm in it to win it. You know, it's just a good book. It's such a good book. So Peter Pan and the Lost Boys come up with this crazy plan to free the British soldiers. And pretty much it all works. One of the Lost Boys, Felix, is super awesome and he's badass. The team ends up finding the captured British soldiers and they escape. And they get to the shoreline and they want to make their way back to London. Only to find out they arrived what they call hell. I'm not going to give anything else away. It's just crazy. It's such a good book. If you are not reading Peter Pondrafast, Go read it. Go pick up. It's only it's only on issue two. Get issue one. Get issue two. Read them both, and then thank me later. Peter Pontefast issue two. It's a buy. I would do the thing with the comic, woo! But I don't have one because I had to buy digitally. Yeah. The next book I will be reviewing, Conan issue two from Dark Horse Comics. Oh my gosh, this entire issue is so good. Get this, just right now, I'm just gonna say it. Go get this, go get it. I don't know why you're still here. Stop watching my review, go get it, right now. Just do it, don't really though. Don't really though, I don't want you to go. Just keep watching me. Also like it if you want, I don't care. Written by Brian Wood, who is fantastic. Brian Wood, you're awesome. Never liked Conan as a character before, I am liking him now. In this issue, Conan and the crew of the ship he is on, they end up having to fight the Queen of the Black Coast. And one by one, all of Conan's men start to die. Uh, they're not up to the challenge of fighting against the Queen of the Black Coast and her men. But Conan sure is up for the challenge. He is a total badass. This entire issue is just him galloping along and killing all of her uh, men in different ways and it's just great. The entire time that Conan is fighting the enemy, there is narration going on and it's just done so well with the comic and the panels that are drawn with them. Every panel there's a different little bit of narration going on explaining kind of like what Conan is doing and it's just uh, it's just written so beautifully. It's so good. I read this like three times in a row. It was that good. It's like two pages from it. Imagine if you got all the pages and you just got to read it. Look at it. Uh, buy it. Just buy it. You should just buy it. Just buy Conan issue two. Just buy it. Alright, and my pick of the week is for sure Saga issue one. Or should I say chapter one. By Brian K. Vaughn. Brian K. Vaughn. This is Brian K. Vaughn. He wrote Why the Last Man. Pretty much one of the first comic book series I got into when I started reading comics. He also wrote Runaways. The first comic book I started reading when I got into collecting comics on a regular basis. Runaways. So why would I not pick up Saga Chapter 1 from Brian K. Vaughn? Uh, there's no chance I wouldn't have. Artwork from Fiona Staples. 
simply amazing. Never seen anything from her before. I want to see more. She is breathtaking. I love it. It's so good. This issue is the best. It's the bomb. Do you want to find out what happens in this issue? All right, I'll talk a little bit about it. No big deal. This comic book starts off with a birth and a mother and a father named Marco and Alana. The baby is theirs. There it is right there. It's a baby girl. And we get a narrator throughout the story, and it turns out that the narrator is their daughter. Obviously when she's older. Right after this cute little baby is born, we see this new family of three fighting for their life. You see, Alana and Marco are from two separate planets. Alana is from Landfall, and Marco is from Wreath. Wreath is actually the moon of Landfall. People on Landfall have wings. People on Wreath have horns. There's different kinds of wings, there's different kinds of horns. There's an old woman with a unicorn horn. There are these people with TVs for heads, alligator butlers. There's also this assassin guy with a lying cat, and the lying cat is this cat who detects whenever someone is lying. And a bunch, much more, trust me. This comic is going to be a survival comic of this family trying to survive this war that's going on between their own people. And this war is spread across the galaxy from their own world all the way over to other planets and whatnot. There's a war that's just gotten out of control, and they're stuck in the middle of it. So in this comic, there's magic, there's fantasy, there's space wars, and TV people having sex. This is my pick of the month. This is my pick of the year, probably. If you did not get issue one of Saga, you, my friend, are not a very smart person. And I'm sorry, but you should get it. Now, I'm not saying you're not smart right now. Like, right now, you're not smart. But if you go out and buy this book, you know, today or tomorrow or in a couple of days, then you're smart, so you're good. But for right now, you're not smart, because you didn't buy this issue. You just gotta buy it. Look at it. Oh, you wanna see some artwork? Look at that. That's artwork. I'm showing you this. Buy this comic. This comic is from Image Comics. If you saw this on the shelf, and you didn't buy it, what's wrong with you? Just go buy it. It's my pick of the week. Alright, that's the end of my review for the comics that came out this week, and I hope you guys all enjoyed it. Uh, once again, this is Dennis Youssef. Subscribe, 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 subscribe to me if you already don't. Comment so I can talk to you guys. Time drop in, motherfucker.